Yes, there was definitely some supernatural phenomenon occurring in the house down there. Uh, one of the first things was her day bed that would, um, like clockwork, every night at midnight she'd be sleeping on it and it would fall through to the floor. And after her telling me about this, the following day she was explaining to me what had happened and we were overlooking the bed and at that moment it just fell through to the floor. No one was on it. We were about two feet away from it and it fell all by itself. After witnessing the, the bed falling through with no one even near it, I was convinced that there was something supernatural in the house. Well, the thing was, Jackie had um, inquired about having a um, parapsychologist come and investigate the house. And what had happened was they had came over and we just all talked and told them of our experiences and they suggested going up to the attic because she had heard something or had seen something up there uh, previously. The first thing that I think really set this off was when Jeff Wheatcraft and Barry Conrad um, decided to go up into the attic on the first night of their investigation and Jeff Wheatcraft had a camera in his hand and it was pulled out of his hand and shoved across the room. Also, if I remember correctly, he was pushed by it that very same evening and that was very frightening. When Jeff came out of the attic, he had a look of disbelief on his face. He was very shocked that something from the other side had actually reached out and touched him, pushed him and um, threw a camera out of his hands. He was very frightened. That was the first time the thing had actually touched anybody, and it just happened to be Jeff Wheatcraft. <laughs> what bled, led me to believe that he was skeptical was that he just didn't seem to believe much of it, and he just wasn't very interested. The whole time that they were there, they just asked us a bunch of questions and the parapsychologist had his little um, mini tape recorder recording everything. I don't think anything of that, all those occurrences, I don't think would have happened if they hadn't went into the attic that night. I think they opened up the, the black hole by going up into that attic that night. <laughs> Uh, it's definitely not, it w there was no uh, trickery involved at all. I was there on many occasions and, you know, anyone to do, to have done this would have to be pretty silly to make this kind of stuff up. Uh, there's no way that this, they would go to such extremes to fake something like this. It was something that was happening at the time they investigated it and just some miraculous things had happened and one of them was um, the first night they went up into the attic and a man was pushed. He said it felt like he had a bony hand pushing through his back. And that was probably the first fright, you know, the first encounter of it actually touching somebody. It was very frightening. So it was, I found it difficult to sleep the whole night. Well, I remember it was the morning time, probably about nine o'clock in the morning, and Jackie had woken me up to something she had seen on the kitchen ceiling, and she called me over and said, look at this, and I looked up, and it was little round balls of light floating around on the ceiling. This is Jackie. It's uh, 10.30 Monday morning. Uh, I got a picture of it. I think I got about three or four good shots of it. It's going around on the kitchen ceiling, and there's a white film of smoke up there, and I don't know where the smoke is coming from, but I got the lights that have been zooming around. There's been light beams that on the, dancing around on the ceiling, and then there was also a shape form. My first gut reaction was to run and get out of there. I said, let's go. Let's get out of here. She, um, I couldn't take her away from getting her, you know, she wanted to get her pictures of it. So while she sat there and took her pictures of it, I waited outside on the porch for her. And I'd go back in a couple times, it was still going on, and she was just snapping away. I looked up here, there's a little light 
that was going around and around and around real, real fast. And by this time, it was all clumped here, and it would, it would divide, and it would go back together, and it was like little jelly balls. Pretty soon, um, they were going like like little kites or little fishtails, polywogs, just real super fast across the all the way across over here and back, arching. When the balls of light were on the ceiling, it was very frightening. I would, had just woken up from a night's sleep, and I looked up on the ceiling, and there were these lights flying around, and my first reaction was like, oh my God, what is this? What is this? I want to get out of here. And in the meantime, Jackie was just taking pictures. They were um, very bright and luminous. All the blinds in the kitchen were shut, so it wasn't from the outside sun sunlight. Um, they were round and just like, they looked like they would jiggle and they would move around a little bit and break apart and come back together. And it lasted probably about 15 minutes brightly on the ceiling, kitchen ceiling, till it finally dissipated into one little ball and then vanished. But looking at the prints and what we've seen from it, weird. I mean, the patterns and the lights that we saw from this is a little unusual. It's not say so you can say this is a particular item, but it doesn't really match what should be in a print like this. When this was happening, I was very frightened, more frightened than Jackie was, obviously, because she stood there and took pictures of the whole, the whole uh, occurrence. I was ready to run out the door. I asked her to leave, but she was very interested in getting it on, on, um, on film. The ghost did have a big effect on her mental state. She would, um, she became very jittery and nervous. Mostly all the time, she couldn't really sit down or concentrate on one thing at, at a time. Her attention span was really short also, because all she was thinking about was the ghost, the ghost, the ghost. That was her main focus for a long time. Kept her on edge for months. She spent all her time thinking about it or talking to friends about it. Yeah, she was very frightened, she needed me to be there with her or somebody to be there with her every night because things would happen on a daily basis that she, she couldn't handle by herself, that she needed someone there constantly for support besides her two kids. Um, yeah, eventually things got so bad that she couldn't handle it anymore. She had to leave. I, I can remember, she told me that it killed, I think she said it tried to kill Jeff. I was in San Francisco at the time. Um, I called her on the phone or she had called me and she said that it tried to kill one of, one of the uh, investigators. But that, that was the most scariest thing, seeing the still photos of a man being hung by a rafter on, with a clothesline. I'm, thank God I wasn't there that night. I don't think I would've went back there after that. Well, I believe uh, it had something to do with the property there, someone that had lived there in the past, or something to do with Jackie. Got, I have no idea what that could be, maybe some of her own psychic energy, but um, I believe it's connected with the, with the land there or the house. I know there's such things like, as ghosts, but for all you disbelievers out there, after you have witnessed some of the footage on this tape here, um, you'll be a believer. I think perhaps what was in Jackie's house and her situation was an earthbound spirit that moved on um, to another realm, but wasn't satisfied there and had some unfinished business on Earth here. And that's why it came back to um, Maybe get us humans help somehow, but there's no possible way we could have helped it. Uh, I don't believe the ghost wanted to kill Jackie. It harmed her physically a couple times, 
but I think if it wanted to kill her, it, I think it was strong enough, it had the potential, it could have killed her, but I don't think it wanted to, no. I believe the ghost was very evil for what it, it's, what it let happen to her life and how it affected other people's lives and the violent things that it has done to everybody. Um, I think it attacked him because he was a disbeliever and I think the ghost was angry and it wanted to take it out on somebody and he was the perfect target since he didn't believe in it. It was kind of like a, you know, it was getting revenge on him or saying, oh, I'll show you, you don't believe in me, well look what I can do. So I think it had it in for him. Uh, I've never seen anything as phenomenal as what I've witnessed at her house on 11th Street, especially the Balls of Light was one of the first encounters that I've had. It's something I'll never forget. It hasn't really changed my life, but it's something that I probably think about every day of my life since then. Probably something I won't soon forget.